Um, I thought we'd look at something a bit different today, um, and we'll look at how to build a, a web server. Formerly, we'll call it an HTTP server. So that is the thing. If I go to a website, so let's have a look. If I go to, I'll choose this very interesting website. Only a mother could love that face. How does the data from you know, this remote server, in this case, it's the one I'm running, how do we ask that server for that content? How does it come over to us? And you know, people may have heard of um, web servers like Apache or Nginx. I use a slightly different one on my site, but they're all fundamentally similar. They're all very, very big. And if you look at the code for this, you just cannot see the forest for the trees. But it turns out that we can simplify heavily. Some would say cheating. Um, but we can cut it down to a very small thing, and I think you can really see the essence of it. And not only does that tell us about how uh, a server that give, gives us a normal website is, but people use these HTTP servers for all sorts of other things like microservices and so on. And it's really useful to, they're ready to know how they work, but I have implemented this twice in software I've written in the last couple of months. So I, you know, there are reasons why we might want to do it ourselves as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write one. Uh, I'm going to do it in Rust. Now, that doesn't really matter which language I use. I could have just as easily done this in Python. And I bet you I'm going to make some mistakes as we go along. Um, you can work out which ones are deliberate and which ones aren't. And what we'll try and do is build it up bit by bit so that there'll be some gobbledygook at some points. Can't really avoid that. But I hope each of the stages will kind of make sense in and of itself. And we can work out what it is, do another stage, see what works and doesn't, add a little bit more. I'm wearing long sleeves today, but I'm going to show you I haven't got anything up my sleeves. I'm going to start right from the beginning. So I'm going to make a, a fresh Rust project. And what we're going to do is, you can literally see it's hello world. So we'll just check again to check that I'm not doing anything silly. So it prints out hello world. So we're starting at the very basics. So what is a web slash HTTP server? So it's a program that listens for connections. So imagine this is running some website that you know about, if it's, whether it's my site, Tract.net, or something else. It's sitting there listening for web browsers to make connections to it. So I'm going to assume that we know how the internet works broadly, TCP, IP addresses, those sorts of things. And if you don't know the mechanics of those, it's not super important. What we've got to do is listen for incoming connections. So that's the first thing we have to do. So let's do that, and then we'll see how we augment that, because it turns out you know, not everything works quite straight off the bat. We will, first of all, say we're going to make a listener. And let's see, TCP listener, I think. Yeah, oops. And we have to say, where do I want to listen on? So 127.0.0.1, uh, also known as localhost, that's my local machine. So I'm just going to make sure this is a server only I and my local machine can connect to so that one of the corners I'm going to cut later is about security. I don't want any bad guys getting in. So I'm going to say only listen on my local computer, and I need to choose a port number. And HTTP normally runs on port 80. That's only available to the super user. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to say I'm going to listen on port 9999, and we'll see what that does in a little bit. So. Oh, and because it's Rust, I'm going to say, whenever you see dot .unwrap, that means an error can happen. If it does, just make the program crash. We'll deal with those crashes as and when we do them. So this is the first little step. And we'll run this and just see what it does. Not very much. It listened. No one connected. And it gave up <laughs> straight away. That's what we want. So what we have to do is say, multiple people might come in. There could be a queue of these people. We're only going to deal with one person at a time. We're not going to be very clever. So we're going to say, dot incoming. So this says, as someone comes in, we want to potentially listen to what they have to say and give them something back. And then for reasons that you don't want me to go into, I'm going to say dot flatten. That's not very interesting. So now, inside this loop, someone's connected to us. So this is the first time we have to think, what's going to happen next? They're going to send us a request. We're going to give them a response. What's the request looks like? Well. There is a formal document, um, and we'll have a quick mention of that in a minute. But let's actually do what the browser will do. So I'm, what I'm going to have my program do is just print out whatever it's been asked of it, even though we don't yet know what that is. So I have to do a little bit of weird stuff here, but it doesn't matter too much. Do, do the buff reader. And then this is one of the weird things you always find with network programming. You have to do some of this sort of boilerplate stuff. It's, it's just, eh, you get used to it. So I'm going to say read into that line. So if I've got that right, and I bet you I've made mistakes, <laughs> um, we're going to just read all of the lines in the request given and just see what they look like. Let's see what happens. Oh, this is one of the fun things with Rust. I'll 
need to do. Okay, cool. Uh, I missed off a dot unwrap. Right. Okay, so notice now my program has not immediately exited. That's a very good start. So let's now go to our browser and I'm going to do this. So notice I've gone 127.0.0.199999. So that's the port number from before. So do that. It's like, mm, nothing seems to be happening. My browser is kind of stuck, but if I go back to my terminal, it's now printed out stuff. Here is a request. So this is what the browser has sent to my program. And it turns out that the only thing we're actually gonna care about is really this line here. So this whole thing that I'm gonna highlight now, this is formally a request in HTTP 1.1, which is specified by RFC 2616. You'll be glad to know I'm not gonna go through that document in any detail. But the browser sent us this request and we've just gone, thank you, and not done anything else. <laughs> You did it perfectly, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. I mean, we, we've got a slightly sociopathic program here, or you could call it a very good listener, depending on which way around you want to think about this. So it turns out that when the browser sends you this request, it's expecting you to give a response or to do something else, but we've kind of done neither. And its request, you can't easily tell it from here, but its request will finish with a blank line. So the easiest thing we can now do is say, okay, when I see a blank line, it sent me all the data it's going to send me. I'm simplifying things here, but that will do for what we need. We're just gonna say if, and I'm gonna get the dot trim just gets rid of any space or weird character at the beginning end. If we hit a blank line, we're done. So now we'll run that again and reload our page. And did I get that bit right? I probably got something wrong. Oh yeah, well I need to now send it back some data, although it's still waiting for me to do something. So I'm going to say, and this is the fun bit that's really surprisingly easy. I'm gonna send back a response. Now this is specified by the RFC blah, blah, blah that I mentioned earlier. And browsers have to be quite tolerant, don't they? So they have to- So I am abusing this monstrously. <laughs> I am an incredibly bad citizen here. So I'm cutting corners knowing that the browser will, will deal with this. If you were doing the full job, you would do some other things that rather more carefully. So for example, where I'm just reading in one line at a time, you have to merge lines technically, but the browsers won't make use of that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, you know, I'm happy to make use of their thing. So I'm now writing the response. I'm just gonna send them back, hello kind of world sort of thing. So. Everyone's heard of 404, right? This is a meme known even by everyone's family members, although I don't know anything about computers. It's one of the error messages, and it just means there's a missing file. 200 is a response code that says success. 404 says something's missing. So we're gonna send back a 200 saying something good has happened. And we're gonna say it's an okay. Now for weird reasons, because this is an old standard, you'd think we just have to put a blank line here, but we have to put the old fashioned carriage return new line thing, it's weird. And we have to create a blank line, so we're gonna do that twice. And then we'll just say, hello. And oh, I'll have to put another wrap here. Right, so now let's run that. Uh, yes, I will now have to do another fun little bit of weird incantation, but hopefully the last one. Okay, go back to my browser. Uh, so I've done something wrong, so what have I done wrong? I can look at the code and I can see what I've done. This line here, number seven, should be inside the loop. Otherwise, they'll always have some content in. So let's run that again. Uh, and then when I go here and press reload, okay, my thing prints out hello. Let's, and just to check that I'm really not lying, we'll say hello computer file. So now we can really see the browser's made a request. We've given it a response. Cool, we have now made a fully functioning HTTP server, but I am not sufficiently impressed. And I can tell Sean that you are not sufficiently impressed yet either. I'm not seeing cat pictures just yet, you know. I don't have any cat pictures. Are you allowed to have websites without cat pictures? It's crept in, isn't it? It's certainly crept in. So if you're expecting cat pictures, I'm really sorry. I'm afraid all you're gonna see is one of my ugly mugs. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna move my website, no cat pictures, and we're gonna see if we can get that working so we can make actually send up my website via this thing. So. I've just got a literal copy of my entire website. I'm gonna put it there. So I've now put all of my website locally and it looks like it's gonna be quite hard to do this. But what we can do is see something if we go and change our little request. So let's run our program again 
And one thing that's not obvious is in the request line. What's that slash in the middle mean for the forward slash? Well, let's, and there's a reason I'm typing it like this. So it still says hello computer file, but now we can see it says get slash lorry slash index.html. So you can see a link between the thing in the browser URL and the middle thing. So that middle thing in between get and HTTP 1.1 that's called the resource we're requesting. So we want to break that bit out and we're going to ignore everything else the browser sent us. Absolutely everything is completely boring from our perspective today. So what we're going to do, we know that that first line is special. So let's do that. And we're going to say, right, and I'm going to do a little bit of gobbledygook here. I'm going to say, um, take that first line, split it by the space characters. This is the weird bit. I'm going to put it in a vec of things, doesn't matter why. And then I'm going to a slice of it. And what I'm going to do is say, if someone gives us a get request, because there it turns out there are some things that are not get, if you've heard of post queries and things that we're not going to worry about those. There's the resource, that's the bit we're asked for. And we're going to check that people really are sending us only HTTP 1.1 because we don't want to deal with anything else. We've got to fill in the dot, dot, dot. If anyone gives us anything else, we're just going to complete the error and give up. Nothing clever. Now, we're going to move all this into here. So our web server is getting slightly more sophisticated, but not by very much. So let's not print that out. So what we're going to do now is say, we want to find the file someone asked, and we want to send them the file. So I know that I put all of that website in a directory called htdocs. Oops. That's going to need to be mutable. And so then I'm just going to say, OK, just and this is right, anyone who's security conscious, close your eyes, pretend I haven't done the next bit that I'm going to do, because I'll explain to you why I'm doing it, sort of. We're just going to say, OK, just load up the file that they've asked. No checking, because they, they can ask for naughty files here, and we'll, we'll, we'll just happily send it to them. We can no longer send hello computer file, but what we can say instead, oops, what did I forget? There's a semicolon. Right, let's see if we've got something. Yeah, of course, I've missed a dot on wrap. You really start to like unwraps when you're writing Rust in this style. OK. So let's say run it. And we press F5. Hmm. Our browser is now displaying nothing. And our server has, has, has thrown an error. It said, I can't do it. And the reason for that, if I print out the file that we're asking for, is that the resource starts with a forward slash. And actually, I'm now trying to load, a, let's say, a, a, a file that I'm forbidden from accessing on my computer. So we're just going to say, and this is, again, not great security, but it'll work for us. We're just going to get rid of the first four slash. So when someone asks for slash lorry, slash index, slash we're just going to get rid of the first slash. That's all we're going to do. Do that. Boom. It works. It's fast, mostly because it's very simple. So I'm now very happy. I feel like I've achieved something. It's not a cat photo, but it'll do. So I can, you know, I can go and click around on this stuff. It works. But if I do this, Oh, no, it's crashed again. In this case, I clicked on the home button. Uh, and if you look at the URL, the URL now ends in a forward slash. And anyone who's done any HTML programming knows that the convention, it's not mandated by HTTP, but the convention on most web servers is if you reference a directory name, so it ends in a slash, you'll look for a page called something like index.html. So I've got to handle that case carefully. And as you'll know, I'm not a careful person, so I'm just going to handle it uncarefully. So I'll say, if the resource that you asked for just ends with a forward slash, then I'm just going to say, OK, I just assumed you asked for index.html. <laughs> It'll do. Save that, run it. Oh, no, I didn't name put. Boom, now that works. So no, notice now I can, I'm picking up the right things there. The other things work, we're done. So let's just go back to this. And there are some more things I could do. You know, I could make it more secure. I haven't done a 404 page for those who wanted one. You can work out with a couple of lines where I might put that in. But that is 26 lines of code. I'm going to not count the blank lines, so I'm going to count really 26 lines. And a blank line up there, 25 if you want to be more precise then. It's a complete. A uh, very simple corner cutting HTTP server. And I hope by building it up bit by bit, you can see there's not much magic there. When you look at it, it's easy to get distracted by the gobbledygook. But by um, building it up bit by bit, I hope you can see 
how we've ended up with what we have, why it works, you've seen me make some very stupid mistakes, and hopefully show also some of the real normal mistakes you'd make in building up to that full thing. I can see how that kind of works and corner cutting we might come to in a moment, but why, if you can do it with so few lines of code, are some of these servers so big and complicated? They're normally trying to handle many more cases and they're trying to do things much faster. So one of the corners that I've cut here is, imagine two people ask for um, data at virtually the same time. Whoever gets there first will handle them however long it takes to do so. So if they're on a really slow connection, it takes a couple of seconds to send them the data. The second person just has to wait until the first person's completely served. So doing things in parallel, that turns out to be a great deal of fun. Very difficult to do, but absolutely necessary for performance. People also then want a ton of features. So one of the things I did here is I assumed that just by connecting to my server, I knew what site you wanted to go to. But actually one HTTP server can uh, serve multiple different sites with different names. That introduces complexity. Now you're gonna have configuration files. You're gonna have all of this sorts of stuff that is the things that people expect from a real industrial grade one, as it were. And if you were gonna use this simple, I'm not gonna call it simplistic, but simple version, is it possible to make that secure? Or is security part of the compl complexity? You could make this secure, um, and probably only with another three or four lines of code. So one of the things, and I'll leave this as an exercise for the viewer, um, someone who was clever and evil, uh, you've got to be both. I think being evil is not enough, being clever is not enough, you've got to be the both. Could work out how to get this to give them files that are outside of my uh, website directory. You can add a check in a couple of lines that says, if someone asks for a file outside of where I want them to, abort the thing and say, no, I won't do that. And actually that's pretty much going to be enough on its own to get you all of the security this very simple one needs. Now, if you get more complex, you've got Multi, you're a, a server serving multiple sites, you'll want to do extra security, things like making sure people from one site can't access things from the other or if you've got connections and so on. But for a simple um, system like this, that security, there is no such problem because we don't support it. So it's just that thing really about making sure we don't give people files that they didn't, that they shouldn't have access to. And it now runs in well, that's a tenth of a second. It has run two orders of magnitude faster. And in fact, I think... We'll see if I've no other like station will begin or continue its own transmission. It's and this is really the core, the heart 